What is up everybody? This is Paul Potter with Crappie Fishing TV where we share tips and tricks that I use as a guide here on Grand Lake in Oklahoma to help you catch more fish. Today we're going to be talking about how I scout for crappie and giving you as much detail as possible so hopefully it helps you to go catch them too. Cleaning out my boat, getting everything ready, and then I realized something. I drink an absurd amount of Mountain Dew every day on my guide trips. I mean, look at this stuff, guys. This is what I drink this morning from 7 a.m. to noon. This is what I've had to drink, and this one right here is the really bad one. Dude, there's 480 calories in this thing. 480 calories. Do you know how much sugar is in one of these Mountain Dews? I feel like I'm a hummingbird or something, like I'm living on sugar water. I mean, something's gotta change. Ah, mm. All right, so we just finished a guide trip today and we're gonna go out here and do some scouting because we have some more trips coming up and we're gonna be giving you guys as much detail as possible into uh, how I go out here and how I find crappie. Uh, it might not be the same way everybody else uh, looks for crappie, but this is the way I do it and I hope it helps somebody uh, learn something that maybe they didn't know before. So let's get into the video. So tip number one is scout areas, don't scout spots. And what I mean by that is, you know, I always have people call me and say, man, I know a killer spot over here. I know my honey hole. You know as well as I do that honey holes and, you know, and all these good spots that you have marked on your graph, they go cold sometimes. So what are you going to do when these spots go cold? Well, in my opinion, this is just me again thinking out loud, but if I scan an area and I get to learn an area by scouting it, I'm going to learn a lot more about that area. And there might be 10 spots in that area. And once you start scouting that area uh, on a regular basis, you'll start learning what these crappie do after a cold front in that area, what they do after, when the wind's high, you know, when it's raining, you know, all that stuff. If this is making sense, type slabs down into the comments section. Uh, also, let me know down in the comments if you have any other uh, tips, tricks that relate to this, or if you think I'm just totally bizarre and off my rocker and you disagree with me 100%, put it down in the comments. Uh, I'd really like to know what you guys do uh, as well to chase these slabs. So, okay, so before we start scanning again and looking for crappie, I want to show you one trick that I use. Uh, it has to do with my mapping. Um, I actually changed the color uh, on my map uh, so it shows different depths with different colors. And what this does is it allows me to pick a depth and it will change the color on my screen. Like right here, you can tell it's white and then it's blue. And I set that because that's the depth that I'm going to be scanning at. So what I did was I went over here to settings and I see this safety depth, you can change this. And there's other ways to do this where you can really dial it in and I don't really get all wrapped up in all that, but these are just the basic settings right off the bat on safety depth, you can put six, 18, 30. So if I'm, when I'm scanning, especially right now, you know, we're looking for brush piles in 10 to 20 feet of water. So what I'm doing is I changed my safety depth to 18 and what that does is it changes the coloring so if, if I go back here and I change it back to 30 you'll see boom the white just changed back so now it's showing you where 30 feet is on your map and what I do is I use my boat and I will go along the line I will just follow that line right next to the white and blue and I and that's where I'm looking for brush piles so I use this as a, as a as a depth gauge so that whenever I'm scouting, I'll just follow along this line. Like right now, we're gonna be looking, you know, we're looking for brush piles in 10 to 20 feet of water. So I've got my safety depth set at 18. You know, whenever I've got my 
my side scan and my down scan on and all that. See, I can take this and I can zoom in and I can really see, I can really see the detail of those lines. Now, when I'm scanning with my boat, all I have to do is follow that white line all the way around and I can scan the whole cove and stay in 18 foot of water the whole entire time. I can see with my side scan and my sonar, uh, you know, what's in the area. So that's what I do. It's a, it's a helpful trick and I know it'll work for you. You'll definitely want to check that out. And I'm looking at my side scan. We're getting a little shallow now. So now we're going to go back to the right. Now we're coming back up on the white line again. We're going. We're just looking for stuff. And boom, oh, there's one right there. Now that's not very big, but you can still see it. There's a brush pile right there. And guess what? It's in about 15 foot of water. So we just found that brush pile basically because we were, you know, staying in at the right depth and we were scanning. Uh, I saw a few crappie on it. We're gonna go check it out with the live scope and see what it looks like. But uh, that's definitely a brush pile. That's how I find them. Now it's just a, a matter of replicating that process, right? Uh, we know what the pattern is. We know there's crappie at 10 to 20 feet. So we're gonna look for as many brush piles as we can today um, in, that, in that depth range and we're gonna check them out with the live scope, see if there's any fish on them, you know, see if we can catch any. You know, if we can catch four or five really quick, bam, that's, a, you know, that's an active pile, and it might be one that we consider, uh, you know, taking on a guide trip, right? That's it for today. I hope you guys got some valuable information out of this. If you did, hit the like button below, subscribe, and leave a comment down in the comment section and let us know how you liked the video. I also want to give my buddy Josh a shout out. He's been helping me do some filming. He's been filming me and stuff over the last few days, really helping me out. Uh, this guy's always on call. Uh, and I call him, I'll call him at midnight and this guy will come over and fix my trolling motor uh, that night. He's always been there when I call, need a repair. Uh, you guys should check him out. I'll put a link to him uh, down in the description below.